Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I don't know. I mean, see, I always try to figure out what kind of content I can do. It seems that a lot of times some people love the comic book reviews. Some people love the my reality kind of style where I talk about shit that's on my mind. Some people like it. I mean, I don't want some people some sometimes some people might look at it and it's like, I don't know. Um, a friend of mine, she was going through depression, and um, she always comes to me because she knew I went through depression. So what I did is I went through my channel and looked, found like two or three videos, and I said, send it to her. I said, hey, look, just look at these and see if these help you. Don't know if she watched them yet, so I'm going to give her a couple days to see how, you know, and I say, you know. See what happened was those days. Those days I wasn't feeling that down. I wasn't really feeling that down. But the thing is that because of certain other reasons, I could just like okay, fine, whatever. Yeah, I just lost my train of thought on that. I'm sorry. Well, let's talk about some comic books. Next is the Mortal Hulk number 35 now the funny thing is I thought this video I thought this cover looked really cool I bought it because I'm not a big Hulk fan my bet one of my best friends he loves the Hulk I'm not a big Hulk fan but if you look at the cover you see him surrounded by kids you're not afraid of him one is holding a Hulk figure so I wonder what that was all about so basically on the I saw after I read it I said huh they're trying to rebuild find out that it's not just one Hulk. The Hulk is just not Bruce Banner and the Hulk. It's Bruce Banner and separate personalities. They written it as every Hulk is a separate personality. There's like a Savage Hulk. There's a quote unquote somewhat lovable Hulk. There is a super super sad and a sadistic Hulk. And it's Joe Fix It. Joe Fixit was a callback to back in the day when the Hulk turned gray again. Originally, the Hulk was gray, then he turned green, then he went back gray again. And um, he was smart, and he f fashioned himself as a gangster. So this is about Hulk and his, all his personalities. So they're trying to rehabilitate him and stuff, so, you know, hey, that kind of happens. It's an interesting book. Am I, too, am I a big fan of that? No. Okay, these next two books I bought from a, a, a site that says, hey, we have all these comics for like 40% off. So I'm like, okay, out of 100 some comics, if I can't find 20 books, if I can't find 10 to 20 books, that's like 40% off, then I'm not going to do the sale. So I always look, and after a couple hours, I, I settle on these two, Fantastic Four, number 12 and 13. The covers are good. Cool. The covers are good, especially like this one. And this one's these covers are really cool. Now what happens, this is the thing versus the Hulk. Okay, and the Future Foundation. The Future Foundation is a a loose kid-based organization that the Fantastic Four sponsors. So what happens is run by another kid who call back to the Power Pack days. <clears throat> way back in the day and they're older now so but this idea is what happened Ben Grimm or the thing he got married alright he's married I should have bought that issue but I'm like eh oh, whatever he married to Alicia Masters who is blind and of course, she don't care whether he's rocky or so. so. In a way, it kind of tells it kind of it's kind of like a love story where it doesn't matter if you look like a monster; it's it's what's inside that counts. Kind of storyline that's been around for like 20, 30 years. But what happened was there was this character called the Puppet Master, who's the father of Alicia Masters, who's blind. The puppet master creates a puppet of the Hulk, takes over the Hulk's mind, and has him kill Ben Grimm or the Thing. And this is their fight. 
on their on his honeymoon. Now, what happens once a year? I guess something happened. I guess I don't know what happened. Like I said, I haven't read Fantastic Four in a while, and the Fantastic Four debacle with Fox and Marvel had them kind of like gone for like five or seven years. So who knows what happened? But the way how the storyline is that once a year he reverts back to his human self. So he's like, well, I'm gonna go on a vacation with my wife. I'll be human. Make some kids. You know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so the Hulk looks for Ben Grimm and they have a big slug plus fight. And one of the big th and one of the reasons why I said, Oh my god, this is the one I should have bought. I should have bought this when I had the chance years ago, but I got it now. There was an article about what happens if Ben Grimm Rocky exterior gets damaged. Because you never see it. You see him get hurt, but what happens is when he gets when he gets hurt. He's supposed to chip off like a rock. It's like like you know how your skin like has like skin tags and you can just rip it off like skin. His his he flakes. Of course it grows back. And what happened is what does it look like if he if his face got so damaged that the rock fell off? And you see his supposed skin. So this is what happened in his fight with the Hulk. The coolest thing about it is that he has the Hulk shows up and he has like two hours before he turns human so he's like I don't want to fight and then he real and after a while he realizes the puppet master controlling the Hulk so he's trying to get the Hulk to snap out of it snap out of it and the Hulk is like I'm a I'm a slave but anyway part two the Dr. Doom does not show up in this at all and this is a variant cover anyway so that's the reason why I bought it so what happened is that they're fighting, they're fighting still, fighting still. He's almost about to give up because the Hulk is always stronger than the thing. And everybody always talks about what is the thing in the Hulk fights. Whenever they do, the Hulk always masters because the Hulk, he gets madder, he gets stronger. Same thing. He's about to give up and he has like less than 10 minutes before he turns human. So what happened was um, his wife comes to him. He said, I give up. I can't. She goes, you know, you can't give up. You're being grounded. You're the thing. Thing never gives up. He gets his cup of courage, flattens the Hulk out with one punch. Now, mind you, this is a, this is a mind-controlled Hulk. So the Hulk is very powerful, but he's not as powerful as he could be because he's mind controlled he, he with his left hand with the ring finger which is super titanium steel kind of thing that doesn't break punches the Hulk and knocks him out cold and then he just passes out next you know a week later he reverted human healed up came back to rocky thing has a has a cast on <laughs> He has a cast. He has to wear forever. There's a cast he has to wear. And he's like, oh, man, he missed it out. But anyway, it was kind of cool. The best part about this part of the storyline was the ending. And there's a reason why I say it was the ending. The Hulk breaks into the uh, the maximum prison that the puppet master is in, which is underwater. The Hulk looks up. He goes, Banner almost died a couple times getting here. And the puppet master, what are you talking about? What, 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 what do you, what, what do you, what, what are you going with me? He says, I want revenge for taking over my mind. Grabs the puppet master by his arms and just crushes his hands. He says, Oh my God, you crushed my hands! I said, That's not all I'm going to do to you. Paint the black. Sadistic. I guess that's one. This, see, this is the immortal Hulk, which he has sadistic tendencies. But anyway. Fantastic Four Empire. Now what happens, this is the this was the spring event that was supposed to happen before COVID. Because of COVID, everything got pushed to the summer. So this is the Empire, which is between the two warring factions called Scroll and the Creed War. Lots of things are gonna happen. X-Men is a part of it. 
almost every hero, almost every hero is going to be a part of this. I picked it up because I wanted to see what the this is the issue zero. This is the thing that starts it off. So I want to see what it's all about. So the Fantastic Four is on a space mission with their two kids. Yeah, they have kids. Mr. Fantastic, Mr. Fantastic and Sue Richards, they have kids too. One is called Franklin Richards. Now Franklin Richards has been around in the Marvel Universe for like the last thirty years, some years. Now he's like teenager. First he was like little kid, little kid, little kid, little kid. Now he's teenager. He's considered the most powerful mutant on Earth. That the X Men tried to recruit, tried to say we can take care of him. Fantastic Four. No, this is my kid. I can do it. And Valeria, who is, it's funny, is their daughter, whose godfather is Dr. Doom, their greatest enemy and rival. <laughs> Don't ask me about that. But there's a, there was a story about that. There was a big story about that. I guess, if I remember correctly, she when she was had Valeria, she was about to die. Reed Richards couldn't figure out what it was, and Dr. Doom figured out how to save her life. <clears throat> big storyline and he used that to try to kill, destroy the Fantastic Four and failed of course but you know hey it's a villain what do you expect so they go so they go they're in a deep space They their spacecraft runs out of power how did it run out of power I don't know because you would think that Mr. Fantastic who's the one of the smartest men on the planet on the planet Earth whose daughter Valeria is smarter than he is would know Maybe we should have this, but that's one. Pl that's a plot device. It's a plot device to put them in this matter. So what happens? They end up bartering. They could. They don't have their, their space money, space currency, space currency. You notice know, they're a barter system now, and everybody's like, well, "Why is there a barter system? Something's going on." So they hitched a ride to go to the space casino, which was run by. Uh, this the Grandmaster's sister. But if you want to know who the Grandmaster is, Grandmaster is one of those elders in the universe who was featured in Thor Ragnarok movie, played by Jeff Goldblum. Very funny, very funny movie. Very funny guy. <coughs> so she runs a space casino and she has the Skrull and Kree kids fight each other to perpetrate the war to get to make money. Long story short, they go there. The two kids, they, they decided to investigate, leave the kids at the ship. The two kids decide, you know what? We're in a space casino. Let's go gambling. We don't have money. We'll put the ship up for barter. We win all our money back to buy the ship and repair it, and, we can, and we're off at home. And the older Franklin is like, goes along with it and still saying, no, no, no. And she, so, which means she's, this, this little girl is very headstrong. <clears throat> so in a way, that's kind of cool. But in a way, it throws them in problems too. So, and like I said, she's smarter than Reed Richards, so she knows how to figure out how the gambling works. And so, what happened was at first they lost almost everything. They, they started gaining back after she figured out how it works, how to ch luck chances and stuff like that. That's why, I like people who can count numbers and cards and stuff like that, that's why they're these kind of people are banned from casinos because they can actually in increase their luck and they can tell if you're cheating or not but anyway during the whole thing the fantastic four see what's going on of course they got to put a stop to it <clears throat> sue richards turns invisible while everybody else goes do their own thing and they said well we got your kids here on the on the casino so she goes to their kids bust the kids and say oh do we have to get the money back she goes I got an idea so she helps them cheat she helps them cheat to win a, this massive amount of money they won so much money from this casino and then I'll tell you why later Mr. Fantastic gets gets captured Ben the Human Torch and Ben Grimm they're fighting these kids and, they, and, and what happened these kids are kicking their asses because they don't understand it Plus, you know, they're kids. They're not gonna. Pull, they're not gonna go full blast. And just when they get captured and everything seems to go, they barter for. They barter for that because they basically bankrupt her. Is it? We'll give you all your money back. 
if you repair our ship, give us fuel to get back home, and we're taking these two kids. And of course she says, okay, fine. And then all of a sudden, the Empire thing starts. Am I going to collect the Empire? Am I going to collect this whole series? No. <clears throat> especially at three, especially at four bucks a pop. No, I'm not going to collect it. Next is Wolverine number two. Now I bought this is a Spider Woman variant. Now the thing is, I bought this before COVID. So naturally, when I bought, I found this, I bought it again, not realizing I bought the story already. <clears throat> Basically, in order to explain this, you kind of have to explain what's going on with mutants. Mutants found this island called Kro Krokoa, which is which is which is a which is his own identity. It's a living it's a living island. Now the fun thing about it. I'm not sure if the same Krakoa from the giant size X Men who eats mutants, but if it is, if it does eat mutants, it's not trying to do that, or is it living off a of mutant somehow? I we don't know yet. But what happens? It creates a pheromone that you breathe in it. You become morally less, and you become morally ambiguous in your actions. That's why the X Men looks like villains, and a lot of people complain about it. These guys are here. X Men are heroes. They're acting more like villains, and they don't care. So what happened is they went to now. What happened is they went to the world and says, "You know what? Krakoa is our island. We want mutant mutant sovereignty. Any mutant is free to come to Krakoa if they want. But any mutant around that does any damage, we take care of them." Now and the thing is, of course, the world is like no, 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 uh, -uh. no, because the world and mutants don't like humans and mutants don't like each other too much. And then they said, well, and the reason why we're gonna, the reason why we we're blackmailing you into doing this, because on Krakoa, there's these flowers which create seeds, and these seeds cure diseases, cancer, diabetes, leukemia. We can give you this. We can give you the cure for all your ills. If you do this. Now, here's the thing. A lot of countries, no problem. America is like, we will work with you on a case-by-case -case basis. We'll let you do it, but on a case-by-case -case basis. Russia said, fuck you. So, they had, so technically, all the mutants are warring against Russia right now. <coughs> So it's kind of hilarious. So this is kind of hilarious about all that. So what happens? That's what. And then what happens on Krakoa? They found out a way how to reanimate people, bring people back to life. Because Professor X has all the DNA from Mister Sinister, like Mister Sinister, Apocalypse, all these mutants, evil mutants, even Magneto, lives on the island, and there's peace. There's peace among them. There's peace among them. Imagine that. The most villainous he, villains are peaceful with each other. But that's the rule there. With Mr. Sinister, they sequence every mutant's DNA. With uh, Professor Cerebral, he has the he has the psychic imprint of everyone. So if a mutant dies, they can bring him back to life. So naturally, in Wolverine number one. <clears throat> He, you know, he dies, and they bring him back to life. Now, how they get the animantium and everything, I don't know. That they didn't really explain that part, but he still has the animantium. But what happened was, the first issue of Wolverine, he's fighting against vampires, which was awesome. Then all of a sudden, number two, they do, they went from the vampire angle to why is this Russian cartel stealing our mutant plants? Because they want to harvest them for themselves, so he's on a mission to do that. The CIA is also involved, so what happened is him and the CIA agent is working together to bust this crime ring, and the CIA agent's daughter is suffering from cancer. So he kind of muscles, he kind of see where this is going. 
That was, that was issue two. <clears throat> issue three is when it all comes down. They band together. He has a plan. Now the funny thing is the the, the opening the opening opening panel for this is Magneto and Wolverine drinking in a bar. Classic. Magneto gets so drunk, passes out. Wolverine steals his helmet for his little mission. Wolverine going to do what he's going to do. And of course, in the X-Men number one, in the one of the uh, Wolverine number one, he kills Jean Grey, which is Cyclops' wife. Of course, she's being brought back to life, of course. And him, Cyclops is like kind of beefing. But the funny thing is, in the X-Factor, they're all in a hot tub together. Don't understand it, but anyway. They find the Russian cartel, recovers, it, recovers all their stuff, gives the, uh, the CIA's agent's daughter the cure for her cancer and they go out for pizza and beer. Issue 4 I'm waiting for because they're going back to the vampire angle again and Omega Red finally. Must have. Must have. Must read. That's one of the very few books I would tell you you got to read. If you're an X-Men fan, read Wolverine. X-Men could be eh, X-Wars, eh, wish you watching. Now, Hellions, I'm like, eh, okay. X-Force, I'm like, eh, okay. Marauders, interesting, but only, only, only caught the first three issues. But anyway, next is Giant Size X-Men number one, Magneto. <clears throat> one of the like comments with your boy Zach his channel panned this one he said this doesn't even act like Magneto but the funny thing is is that on Krakoa you don't act like your normal self you don't act like your normal self and since you don't act like your normal self you're doing anything so the premise of this is the white queen wants an island so she has his help to get an island so he goes okay he searches the world finds his island This guy who's a caretaker of the island says, "Okay, I'll tell. I'll talk to the owner. He'll, and what happens? The owner makes him wait, a while, and uh, of course the guy's like, man, you wouldn't wait. But the funny thing is, is that until you find out who the owner was, was Submariner named where the Submariner, who was the king of Atlantis. He just he's not some summoning boy. He, I show up when I feel like it, and he Magneto waits." He says, I'll let you have the island. Or you help me out on this pro on a mission. So they go on this mission. Some men almost dies on this mission. I'm not going to tell you too much about it because it doesn't really matter. He gets the island and he creates a palace for a white queen. I thought it was pretty interesting. This is a variant, this is a variant cover, which I like this cover better than the regular version. But other than that, you know, it's not that bad. Last but not least. Yeah, this is going to... Out of all these videos, this is going to be the longest one. <clears throat> Spectacular Peter Porker, the Spectacular Spider Hand, number one. I used to read this when I was younger in the, in the 1980s, and I thought it was hilariously funny. Imagine the whole Marvel Universe in, as animals. There you go. Now, the thing is, is that the or they kind of did an origin story. Which is, I thought it was kind of weird. But anyway, it starts off with Aunt May wants to create a hairdryer. She creates this hairdryer, she tests it out, the hairdryer gives her radiation. And she bites a spider. The spider looks like a human. She bites a spider, and guess what? Peter Porker mutates into Peter Porker. Okay. Then he goes on these wacky adventures across the dimensional, like Spider Verse movie. They kind of reference that, and then he's telling everybody about how good he is because of that, which doesn't really make sense because, oh well, he's 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 a character ham. Who cares? He's a ham. <laughs> but anyway, all the villain, all the heroes don't like him. Iron Man because Iron Mouse. Captain America calls Captain Cat. Hawkeye's an actual bird. 
Ant-Man's an ant. <laughs> Doctor Strange's dot is like a crocodile. <laughs> it was hilarious. So what happens? He has his. He has a. He has a. A watch that lets him jump to different dimensions. Iron right, Mouse takes it, creates a dimension portal to, to fight this. Whatever is going on, he steals it and he gets into our universe. The last issue is that he pops back home and Mary Jane walks in the door. Yeah. So basically, the the, the Spider Ham stories that I read. This does not resemble these, these these things at all. So maybe or maybe it's just the first issue. I don't know. Maybe it's just the first issue. I can't I don't know. But anyway, that's it for today. I got about four more four to five more comics to read and I can do a I can do an exposé on that one. Don't I don't know if I get to that today or not. Don't know. Or I might do that this weekend and plus Wednesday is new comic book today, so I'm filming this on Wednesday. All these ones I'm filming on Wednesday, so I'm not sure if I'm going to go comic book shopping today or I'm going to do it tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, my mother goes gets her epidermal in the morning. I'm taking the whole day off. So, <clears throat> so I so as soon as she gets home, settles in, I can go comic book shopping then. I could. I can go. I can hit this one store that I very rarely go to, and they usually will have everything I'm looking for. But anyway, with that, I'm gonna say thank you for watching this. If you like, you know, like I say, if you like any of these books, you can pick these off the shelves somewhere. Some combo stores, you can still pick these off the shelves. If you think that, you know, I don't mind doing spoilers because the way how I look at it, if I do a spoiler. Think about this when you watch when you watch a movie no think about it, when you watch tv <clears throat> and they show you and they and, and they're trying to get you to watch this new movie that's coming out in theaters that's a spoiler they have a they put together a package that's part of the movie which also spoils the movie so you always get spoilers always and since you always get spoilers you know oh well so so like i say if you you know if you like this new format let me know because I'm thinking about doing it. I'm thinking about doing this because it gives me more incentive, not more incentive, more ideas to do videos. So right that I'm gonna say good night or good day or whatever. whenever you see this. I don't know when. Whenever you see this, and hopefully we'll see each other soon. <laughs>